We are calling to order at 706 Mountain, 906 Eastern. And as was stated, this might maybe be a short meeting, but maybe not. Uh, let me pull up. And we don't, do we have any guests? Yeah, Je yes, we have Jeff a couple. Mm -hmm. One. We've got two Robs, though. Um, hold on something. Uh, uh, One second, let me just finish this. Somebody's in the middle of a meeting with all kinds of parliamentary questions. Okay, so we're called to order and I'm trying to pull up the agenda. One moment. All righty. Okay, if you could take the attendance, Madam Secretary. Sure. Uh, Arrowwood, present. Rocco? Present. Sazelski? I am here. Carlos? Present. Latham? Here. Martin? Present. Moulton? Present. Rollet? Here. Rufo? I'll come back. Seebeck? All right, I'll call the alternates. Rich Tommaso? Dave Roberson? Present. Greg Deal? Roger Roots? Dale Logan? Here. And Dean Rogers. I'm here. All right. Um, Mike Rufo. Mike Seebeck. Um, Madam Chair, at this time we have eight members present and three alternates. Roberson, two. Logan, five. And Rogers, six. Okay. And I think there's only one member of the public here. Mr. Jack. Luke. Yes. So if um, Jack or any members of the committee have anything they'd like to say, excuse me, at this point that's appropriate for public comment, uh, raise your hand and I'll call on you. Go ahead, Dr. Moulton. Uh, I saw that. We're doing a transition of the email list uh, to, I guess, Microsoft. Well, one thing I noticed, uh, I wanted to bring people's attention. I don't know if you had the same thing that I did, but when I sent my email saying the test went through, I got a bounce back message that it was not delivered to Rich Tomaso, um, which may be a problem with Yahoo interacting with Microsoft. Uh, I don't know. But honestly, uh, uh, Rich Tomaso. Has he been to any meetings? Um, I don't recall him attending any meetings, so I'm not sure. He hasn't attended any. I'm not sure if he's really active at all. A anyway, I just thought I'd point out that I got to bounce back for him. I, um, I will check on that, though, um, and see if, but he, he hasn't attended any, any meetings at all. You know, I hate freaking signal when you open 
a uh, attachment that like takes up your whole screen. Okay. And uh, someone else had mentioned also on that you have to hit reply. Well, I think when you're on the group, when you're on the group, you could just hit reply. But when you're doing it to individual people, like if you have to hit reply all like it, it, it's I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. But there is some kinks to it. That's a little bit different than Google. Um, Mr. Bracco. Since we were deprived of them last meeting, um, I would like to request at some point during this meeting or perhaps afterwards that we get a, uh, a video evidence of the comically large scissors well there was a video <laughs> posted on the list I, yeah i did send I know, a on YouTube the meeting. video but i i can on get the them i'm i'm home uh, i'll do that okay so we have first of all the approval of minutes from February 1st and February 15th. Are there, I don't know if there were any corrections sent via the list. That's kind of out of it for a bit, but if there were, I'm sure the secretary took care of them, but are there any further corrections? Okay, hearing none then, those are approved. And I wish I wasn't trying to do an affiliate meeting at the exact same time. Okay, so um, let's see here. I'm just closing that screen. I can't help those people who aren't in front of me. And if I have that screen up, I'll continue to look at it. So let me share my screen. So out of the, I'm finding the share function. If you saw the links on the agenda, why is it? Let me know what you're seeing. Are you guys seeing the draft in one second? The draft report? Yes. Okay. So on the agenda, I did like three reports and things can, can move around. But on this first one, this is everything that we all agreed and the ordering that we agreed upon that I hope everyone kind of took a look at to make sure I didn't mess anything up because I kind of did do this somewhat in a haze. So we have 15 proposals on here. Um, from what I understand from Dr. Moulton, he's been able to work on the rationales, but the rest of the committee, I don't know if everyone... One else is here. I know Mr. Latham is here. I should text Mike to see if he, he's who, who else is on that committee. No, that's it. That's uh, Dr. Moulton, uh, Albrecht, Paul, Paul, and myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, what's the status of you and Mr. Bracco taking a look at these? I can only speak for me. I have not had bandwidth to look at them at all. And also the report, too. I am sorry to say. I haven't had time either. Just the LPVA convention is this weekend, and I've just kind of been taking over and by it, that. It looks a little weird. I should right have more time next week. With these like big black blocks, only because I'm pulling it up in Google, which this is um, written in Word, so it, it, it there, there's always a little a funky wonky. Okay, here's then what I suggest, because I'd like everyone to take a look to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Not that this whole report is going out, but what we had talked about last time was getting 
a survey out for the first six. Well, we've got 15 so far, but I know Dr. Moulton's opposed to adding anything, but there are some that I'm sure a few of us might try to, I see the scissors. I see those scissors. Point of privilege, <laughs> I, I have the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I like big scissors and I cannot lie. But I figured we'd go six at a time. But I'd like there to be rationales that are at least the first pass through by the rationales committee before sending out the survey. So here's... And y'all can give me y'all's ideas. So I did, first of all, when it comes to the survey, I did talk to the chair. The, the survey form they wanted us to use is completely untested. And it's part of our new Zoho CRM. And I remember what a nightmare, not saying that Zoho is going to be a nightmare, but we're talking about a brand new thing that no one knows how to use yet. So I got their agreement to use SurveyMonkey. Um, Chuck, uh, you asked me how to make the targeted donation. Just make a donation, send me the receipt, and I will send it to the chair copying you saying that this okay, is- Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that now. Okay, to Survey Monkey, I'm going to do the same thing for $25. Um, I'd really appreciate it if anyone else on the committee would be willing to, you know, no matter the amount, um, they do have, um, a, like, I forgot what it was now again, I, my memory still hasn't even come back. I think it was going to be like a total of $250 for us in the platform committee to use it for our purposes up through convention, something like that. They, they do have a monthly plan that was hidden but it's pretty high, but their yearly plans like 1200 bucks. It's like, it's insane what they've turned into, but survey monkey is, is pretty fantastic. And, and it's use for this. Um, so what I would suggest is to give the rationale committee a week to get through at least the first six. And, um, I write out the email, I get it to Angela um, and I get them to uh, get by the survey monkey subscription so I could start writing out the survey and then I'll just be able to paste in um, any changes that we make. So we're looking at the first survey going out within the next two weeks. So to give the rationales, committee a week to at least do the first six rationales. And again, we're going to keep tweaking these because um, we're what goes out is understood to be somewhat draft because our report's not final until we vote on the entire report, which is going to take into feedback from our surveys right, you know, a few weeks before convention, ho hopefully closer to a month before convention, but we're, we're coming up on that. So if the rationale committees committee thinks that's doable within a week to at least tweak the first six, um, I'll tell Angela to get the survey monkey thing. I'll start set, setting up the survey. And once we have that, we'll just start boom, boom, sending them out. I know platform has passed a few already. So I'd like to get with the platform chair and maybe even in this first survey, send out six bylaws proposals and whatever platform has passed. I think they've passed like three um, so far. And that way, I, A, we're getting the most use out of sending out a party email, which again, takes the spot of a fundraising email. They're very possessive of these emails. But also there are some people who will see it's a bylaw survey and would rather shoot themselves in the head than read a bylaws proposal that might not open the email or even take a look at all 
whereas they're very interested in platform. So we might get a little bit more participation in working with smaller chunks with, with the other committee. So if you take a look at the report I did prepare, the draft report, I'm just going to call it the report, the, this will come off eventually. We'll have a, a master cross-reference, but just for our purposes, I did put under each of the proposals. So proposal one, I put underneath it previously labeled proposal H. So if you need to go back to notes on what we used to call it, that will not be in the final report because that won't mean anything to the delegates. But I will make like an index for us so that we can always cross-reference back to what they were originally called. So I did that for each of each of them. Now, if you also, though, go to the agenda, why is it doing it? I moved everything that was yellow lined to its own report. Again, we're not issuing reports for these, but I just, I did this more for us. So we as a committee right now have three reports for us to look at. Um, we've got our regular one, the ones that we've approved, everything that was yellow and everything that's red. So I've got them all, you know, segregated out and then we could decide how we're going to handle the yellow and the red. But at least it's a work in progress. It won't be me scrambling um, at the end, I did change all of the provisos to be in line with what we passed to say adjournment sine die. Uh, so we, we won't be able to look at rationales tonight, but to be honest with you, I was just going to take what the rationale committee said at least for our survey. I don't think we need to vote on any of that for the survey. I think that's kind of my discretion. And I'll, that's what I'm going to do. I'm waiting for them to, to take a smoothing out of it. And then I'm going to take what they do and use that for the survey. But one thing we do need to vote on and look at tonight, what number was formally P? Where did we put electronic voting? I know it's not in the first six. I think it's... 10 is it just look electronic voting no oh it's 12 okay so it will be in the second survey it'll be in the second group of six so because <clears throat> we dropped the trying to clean up the balloting language i had promised that i would take a look at how that electronic proposal would look without all of those changes. And it's really very similar. I don't know who's had a chance to look at it, but this is how I think holds to the spirit of what we already passed, but we will need to repass this because again, it's not exactly how we passed. So I kept all the language, but some people might disagree on where I put things or may think I made an error. So the changes to the order of business are the same. And um, instead of saying polling procedure, when we had combined it, we had it as um, a title of election balloting procedure. I think that's still a good name for it. And I just put in all of the things from the prior past portion that just dealt with electronic voting here in red, except for the part where it talks about computer readable ballots being used. This other language, after verifying that the number of votes cast does not exceed and you know the business of convention shall continue without interruption. I moved, um, I, I just moved that in, into the rest of the language. So while it's deleted from here, the only part that got deleted for good is this first sentence. Those other two 
were just moved. So here's all of our language that we passed um, for electronic balloting. So I, none of that got changed, except for, again, I moved that language about um, during the period of time allotted for such votes, the business of the convention shall continue without interruption. I, again, that's from here. Um, the state by state delegation totals for each candidate or choice shall be displayed on the screen. We'll get to that. That's moved from another spot. Um, this again, uh, just got moved up here because it, we might be doing electronic ball balloting and this, a portion of seven, three, that talked about, you know, that little fun thing we do with announcing, you know, the presidential candidate, you know, from the great state of whatever, where, you know, we drink all the time and marry our cousins or whatever the state chair is going to say. Um, I just moved it up to the, to the line before. This was um, no longer necessary under officers and national committee because it's up here under the balloting procedure. So there still was a tiny bit of cleanup that needed to be done. Otherwise, we'd have to repeat over and over the whole thing about how it can be electronic or how it might not be electronic. So it's kind of a hybrid um, of the two. And then this part about um, verification of delegation totals, this was all moved up here after the secretary or tellers have recorded all delegate submissions, the state by state delegation totals for each candidate or choice shall be displayed on a projection screen, whatever, whatever that all came from uh, down here. Um, this line got deleted because we have an option of whether or not to use electronic or not. So I hope everyone's had a chance to look at this. If you want additional time to look at it and perhaps suggest any tweaking on the list, or if we want to do a readoption vote via the list, we can do that. Or if everyone's ready to vote tonight, we can do that again. Since this is number 12, it doesn't become urgent until we get to our second round of surveys. And let me just take one because I think that's all really we had on the agenda tonight was for you guys to, to take a look at the draft reports. And um, we need to make our decision about smoothing out the electronic voting proposal. I do see your hand, Mr. Um, Latham. And I, I can warn you that once we do this, there is a proposal that I am bringing back up. Uh, okay, so Mr. is one that I withdrew, so it's not a reconsideration. I just withdrew it. Um, Mr. Latham, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for putting this together, Madam Chair. I like the rationales. I haven't had a chance to look at this yet, but you walking through it has helped in that. I I tried to look, you were talking about that exceeded language and I couldn't find it anywhere else in the proposal. So I was just wondering if it was deleted or reworded somewhere. And maybe I missed it. Maybe that's something, again, you, you guys know how sick I was. Yeah, I don't see that either. So the, the during the period part, is there yeah. so if we if we feel that's necessary then maybe that needs to be thrown in front of that but also i think i think i know what i was thinking there because that really only applies if we're doing a written ballot and um the teller uh, i mean 
you know, maybe it needs to, I, I, maybe maybe it needs to go here if by written ballot after verifying that the number of votes cast does not exceed the number the state is entitled to the delegation chair then submits so maybe sticking it right here because it really only applies to written ballots. Right. Does that make sense? So let yep. me show you what I mean. So it would, if by written ballot, I'm trying to, let me uh, do this blue. And then format, text, no more strike through, no italics, underline, and then make this. So, I don't like the then submits, that's weird. The delegation chair well, whatever, we could worry about that, that grammar. I mean, stop this search. And so it would make sense like that. Yeah, and I just, the then submits maybe just whatever we're using now shall or must i, I wonder what it would like that then submits just seems weird i mean it's correct it just seems weird though the wording just seems if i after verifying right. how about the delegation shall, shall, then shall submit. submit shall then or just shall submit remove then i don't know if then's necessary Like that right yeah it was just kind of weird wording i mean it, it was understandable and technically correct it was just kind of just not the way people it just wasn't normal english maybe well and if you look at the stricken section shall after submit. exceed yes. it says shall submit there yeah yeah that makes more sense and then 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 absolutely nothing's been lost from here except for, and I'll, I'll stick this in purple. This is the only thing that doesn't repeat anywhere because it's no longer relevant because we talk about electronic voting. And then the other things we struck, um, this here is dealt with in the develop, you know, in delivering the written total to the secretary. Um, we don't we already talked about before secretaries don't declare voting closed chairs do that's in roberts it doesn't need to be in a convention rule we had talked about that before and then this whole thing with this little ritual we do just got moved up there so nothing of substance has been lost from here um same thing here is already dealt with up top and again, the, the chair declares voting closed. And uh, the only part that's been taken out permanently from this language is this first sentence. Uh, everything else got moved up to rule two. So it is some cleanup and gets in the electronic balloting all in one swoop. So the things that are permanently like don't have an analog or an exact move is that one and each time it says the secretary because that's just so I just want to stick in purple the things that 
aren't either repeated word for word. I got delivered bacon. A bacon delivery is always wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, it's analog isn't up there. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, do, I, uh, I'm going to say a heresy. I particularly don't like this ritual that we do, but everyone seems to love it. I find it tedious as fuck. But I suppose it makes for a good show on CNN. Not CNN, C-SPAN, whatever it is. Well, we have got media from it in the past yeah. as well. One day, though, a state chair is going to say something really... <laughs> going to do the equivalent of Naked Dancing Man. Hmm. So, I... I don't know if you guys want to um, pass this now or take a look at it further and, you know, maybe in a week do a vote on the list. If there isn't further comment, it's up to you guys again because it's number 12. There's no hurry. Ms. Arrowwood, you... There's Your screen keeps sliding up. Um, Mr. Roulette? Is our intention to keep the purple purple or to turn it back to red? No, I put that in there for our um, for our use only to show what's permanently excised. And I think I'm going to, in the report, when we get to number 12, put an explanatory note. Um that so that delegates know what language was permanently excised and tell them everything else was either moved or the equi uh, equivalent type of language um, is already in there. So I do think we need some kind of footnote or something that lets delegates know w what is permanently gone. But right now that purple is just in there for our reference. And for me to make that note in the report. So the, let, there let also me seems to be yeah, two ahead. different shades of blue. That has no significance, right? No, it's because Word and Google okay, all make it you. all one shade in the report. It's just there's slightly different hues between the two programs. I didn't feel like opening it up in Word. So what's y'all's pleasure? Do you want a, a week to, to look at it further? Or did we want to reapprove it tonight? Ms. Dr. Moulton? Um, I, I would be, I could go either way, but I'm ready to approve it tonight uh, if others are. Um, uh, the language, uh, honestly, I feel it's too wordy, uh, but uh, I think the wordiness is probably important when we initially pass this, just to satisfy uh, people's trepidation about electronic voting. Uh, I'm hopeful if we pass this, we can circle back in you know six or ten years and condense the language when when uh, electronic voting is no longer the boogeyman. And actually here, um, we say the convention chair shall declare voting closed. So this actually hasn't been lost. We just did it to the right person. So I'm actually going to unpurple that because it hasn't been lost. It just doesn't say secretary, which is just blatantly incorrect to, to begin with. So that was in two places. So actually... There's very little that's that's gone for 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 good. I forgot that I did that. That that definitely is. The only thing I'm thinking is, do we or is there a natural place 
to make, um, oh, my numbering got messed up. You know I'll have the numbering correct in the final report. This paragraph here, which is three, it says two, but it's three. Um, did we want to try to divide that into two? Because that is quite a bit of text. Like after the word closed here, did we maybe want to make that a new number? I'm yeah, open to sense. that. That's where I was kind of thinking of natural. Yeah. Would... So please don't make me do all kinds of weird formatting. So it'd be like, uh, I'll make sure the numbering's correct. So I think that that makes it a little less intimidating. And easier to read and more consistent. The lengths are kind of consistent. And actually, I, I see some wording that can be cleaned up. Oh, and I see Dr. Moulton. I'll let Dr. Moulton go first. Um, I just see some wordiness that can be maybe tightened up a bit dr moulton uh I, I mean by all means let's tighten it up i, I was about to say uh i i, I mean i'm comfortable uh, I, I guess we can't exactly call the question but a motion to end debate if no one's speaking up um but i don't want to stop anyone from debating or amending if they have suggestions but we actually to are be pretty, allowed pretty to moot here um, because the LNC gave us permission. No, but yeah, I, I, I understand. Yeah. I, I, I'm wary of doing that. But if no one is speaking up, then I don't think we're stifling debate by moving to a vote. Here, here's what I'm thinking: is this sentence here? I think it perhaps should say, after each delegation voting by written ballot has tabulated its own vote totals, the tellers shall review the ballot tabul tabulation for accuracy, comma, co-sign the delegation totals, comma, and submit the totals to the secretary. I think that's a much cleaner sentence rather than that parenthetical, like after this and before this, they do this. Why don't you just have it as once they get it, they do one, two, three. Dr. Moulton? Uh, I don't believe Mr. Seebeck is here at this meeting, so we could use that opportunity to make amendments here to put a lot of extra duties in the head teller position, like yeah, have the head teller <laughs> do the whole count himself, since he's not here to defend himself. And if there's any errors, like we get to take toes and fingers, <laughs> maybe an error. <laughs> So let me Well, you know what? I'm actually not going to suggest that change. And you want and let me tell you why. Even though I think it's cleaner, I think the less the, the more the wording stays the same while we're trying to get electronic voting in here, the better. So we're not explaining changes that that aren't substantive because we're trying to get electronic voting in here. I think it, it can be tightened up and cleaned up in a in a later thing. So I'm leaving it alone. I, I'm I'm ready to vote as well. Does anyone else have anything to say? Well, I'm going to ask: Is there any objection to this as the electronic voting proposal? All right, hearing none, then I'll let you know what I'm going to do um, in the report that's in the drive, uh, which is this this one here. So for number 12, where I lost my spot, 12 is, oh, come on now. Six more. I know I went past it before. Okay. 
So I, I think I put on here that it needed to be rewritten. Go back up here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put in the, this language here. Um, and then I will write at the end here. After wording a proposal is adopted, I'm going to just put in a little section here of some explanatory notes that explicitly detail exactly what language has been permanently lost and that everything else has just been shifted around. Because I think that's important here for delegates to know. So I'll do that. I'll work on that this upcoming week as well while the rationales committee is working. Um, Ms. Arrowwood. Um, yes, I noticed Rufo nor Seebeck did not show up, which would move Roberson 2 and Data Logan 5 into the regular member voting pe people. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, I think that that's all I had on the agenda for tonight, but if there's other things that you guys think we need to be we need to do tonight let me know otherwise we have some marching orders which i'll excuse marching. me I'll, I'll recap before we adjourn um but i wanted to make sure we were done with everything everyone wanted to do for tonight you still had your hand raised ms arrowwood oh no it's an artifact Okay, well then, um, I say we meet in two weeks. So the need to discuss next meeting date, that will be two weeks. And in the first week, the rationales committee will at least work on the first six proposals. Um, during this, after that week is up, at any point after that week, it's safe for me to get a survey sent out. So I'm going to get the Survey Monkey account purchased. Again, would appreciate any any targeted donations to it. If you do do that, just send me the receipt so I can let the chair know that this is what that's for. I'm going to make my donation tonight um, as well. And uh, so at any point after that week, I'm going to try to get the survey out as soon as possible. I'm going to talk with the Platform committee chair, if they're not ready, they're not ready. We're doing ours no matter what. They they, they may want to wait. Um, they have, if for, I don't know if there's any overlap on that committee besides me. They did pass an intellectual property plank, which is going to get a lot of feedback, I am sure. Um, and also propose deleting the sex work plank as redundant. Not as saying we're against sex work, but it was already dealt with in a different section of the platform. So they have a couple spicy ones that could be potentially spicy that they may want to get in. Um, but I don't know if the chair, their chair, who's Mr. Seaback, is ready to write up anything for a survey. So it's even possible that by the next meeting, the survey will have gone out. But I can't promise it. But at any time after that week of giving the rationales committee, it'll be safe um, to send out. And I will work on putting that language into the report for the electronic voting proposal, um, work out some explanatory language for you guys to look at. And so far, I think that's the marching orders. Um, Dr. Moulton? Uh, yeah, so with regard to the rationales committee, uh, as I mentioned, I've gone through all the proposals Right of my suggestions, uh, still waiting for uh, Mr. Bracco and Mr. Latham. Um, you said you want to send out the first six proposals. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if there's dissension in the rationales committee if we don't come to agreement on the first six. Uh, it it would would you have the discretion to send out like six that we all agree on, <laughs> um, or do you want to just send out six? If we don't agree on it, then it just goes out as is 
I, I, I don't care either way. I just wanted to point out that that's another possibility. Uh, I think you guys are going that. to agree. Okay. But but if not, it'll be whatever two of the three agree upon. Okay. But I, I think you three are going to be able to agree on something. And again, if, if there isn't, you're going to treat it like any other committee, whichever the majority. So nobody's allowed to abstain. <laughs> and I'll say, or or if somebody does abstain, if, if the D, it, actually here's the better way, whatever you guys agree upon, and I'm confident you'll come to an agreement. Let's say you guys can't agree. Somebody abstains, and then the other two are at loggerheads. Then we're going to use what I wrote. The default, the fallback default, will be what I've already written. I think that's the best way to resolve it. And I, but I think you guys will come to an agreement. Um, so next week, um, we, again, survey may have gone out. I would ask the rationals committee after they've done the first six, though, to have an eye toward the next six, since we know we're doing the survey six at a time. Um, next meeting, I am going to be bringing back up again the dual affiliation language. Um I don't mind explaining now, if you guys want to think about it, why I think that's important. We all know the various dramas that are going on in the party. We know that there's been a new national party formed. Uh, I forgot what they're called now. They've changed their name like three times now. But part of the quote unquote gang game, game plan, whatever it might be, to try to further divide the LP or weaken the LP is to try to convince state affiliates to affiliate with both national parties. That will be a disaster for us. What if there's two different presidential candidates? Listen, people need to shit or get off the pot. If they want to join another national party, I wish them the best of luck. Let them go do that. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. You need to decide. Are you an affiliate of the Na of the National Libertarian Party or are you an affiliate of another national party? Each state party can do what they want, but I do not think we should have our bylaws allow these, these games because that game plan has already been leaked as a way to further fracture the party. And I do think it's our job to protect the party, so I am bringing back up that there's no dual national affiliations permitted. And that's uh, why there, that's why I think some, it's important enough to bring back up. It, is there some reason we can't discuss that right now? We can discuss it now. I mean, uh, there's been notice of it before I withdrew it. Um, I wouldn't want to vote on it now because there are some members that aren't here, but there's no reason why we can't discuss it. I, I'm not sure why we can't vote on it either i mean we have alternates that's the purpose of alternates because um, there wasn't really noticed that we would be um i don't think we're breaking any kind of rules but i personally wouldn't feel comfortable i think we could go to an email ballot and tell people to look at the recording for the discussion uh madam chair could you put that proposal yeah, let on me the screen try to, let me find it um we might want to tweak it because, again, we didn't even get to that point because I withdrew it. Uh, one second here. I think many proposals withdrawn. I, I believe I have a withdrawn folder. So it was LL. LL. So it was to add under affiliate parties, no affiliate party shall, and this is the added language, be an affiliate or other constituent unit of any other political party. And then it went on with the or language, which would, um, we talk about, we'd have to see how this fits in with our other endorsement language, though I'd want this to be a separate proposal. 
Um, it's two totally separate concepts, the endorsement concept and this, even though it deals with the same portion of the bylaws. Um, since Dr. Moulton was the one who wanted to discuss tonight, I would like to call upon him first, then Mr. Rollat. Just uh, real briefly, this seems like pretty simple language. I don't think I have a problem with it. Uh, the the only one possible twist that comes to mind is uh, I know we uh, we have like an international alliance of libertarian parties. Um, I I assume that doesn't impact this at all because I think national is a constituent of that and state parties aren't directly constituents of the international libertarian association whatever that's called but I I don't know I'm interested in hearing from others if they see any possible problems with this language I, I can't really see any and let me answer your question Dr. Moulton national it, I don't think it, it it's a what do you call it? Um, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's a coalition. We're not bound by their bylaws or anything. A constituent unit means a child body that is bound by a higher set of bylaws. I don't think we're, we're a constituent unit of the International Association of Libertarian Parties, and they are not a political party. Like, they're a action group. They're a coalition. Like a association, group. Libertarian Parties. Y yeah, it's it's not a political party. Mr. Rolette, oh, well, Dr. Moulton, I don't know if you were done. Uh, uh, just real quick, well, one other thing did come to mind. Um, in some states, the Libertarian Party is recognized under different names. Or, well, maybe not the Libertarian Party, probably the Libertarian Party, but certainly Democrats and Republicans have been recognized under different names. For example, in Minnesota, I believe the Democratic Party is like the Democratic Freedom Party or something like that. Um, is this impacted um, if the, the state recognizes the Libertarian Party and grants any sort of official, I don't know, official ballyhoo, um, and it's under some different name, or that wouldn't impact this at all? No. I'm just trying to look for problems. And, yeah, and no, it's, it's not many. a name thing, because we even have this now. Like, our New Mexico affiliate isn't the Libertarian Party in New Mexico. Um, they They will be but they aren't right now. They're the free New Mexico party. This is a relationship. It's a, a parent child relationship. I know people don't like that terminology, but that is the parliamentary term terminology. So it's to be an affiliate or constituent unit of a larger group. That is an, a political party. So as long as they're affiliated or a constituent unit of the Liber libertarian party, um, uh, there's no problem. There, it's not the name; it's the relationship. Mr. Rollat. Okay. Uh, two things. First, I do think that we should probably uh, vote on this at the next meeting and not at this one. Even though there's like a twenty percent chance that the scheduling conflict will make me miss the next meeting, um, just because it wasn't put in the. Uh, notice of the, uh, of the the agenda notice, and I doubt that Mr. Roof or Mr. Seebeck like looked at the agenda and then decided not to attend. But you know, in general, it's a good practice to uh, to not vote on things if they're not noticed. Not and granted. Um, the second thing is, I do have a very strong opinion about this, and um, I wrote um third party watch a comment about the situation that we're having right now which was made into its own post and whatever you think about third party watch um they at least aired both sides of the debate looking so i i think that the new 
liberal party, I think that's what they're calling it, is completely destructive. Like, I'm not a fan of theirs, and I think that it's terrible that they're trying to do this split. However, I don't like uh, this proposal, and the reason is that I'm looking about 10 years ahead, and there's healing that's going to need to be done. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. But the best possible thing that could happen sometime around the year, like who knows, 2034, 2035, the best possible thing that could be done is if uh, if we could get stitched back together again and people could just say, you know what, we're going to bury the hatchet in the river or you know whatever metaphor you want to use. And this would could get in the way of that hatchet being buried, you know, and you can, you can make the argument that the best way to bury the hatchet would just be to say that the new liberal party is disbanded and everybody, and you know, the, the old constituents of the liberal party will be merged into um, the affiliates that are currently active. You know, that, that would be my preferred way of doing it. But it's not the only way that that could be done. And this sort of ties our hands. The other thing that I kind of, that I would prefer not to have is being, uh, is making people choose. Like if you're in the Libertarian Party of some random state, you're, let's choose one that's not controversial. You're in the Libertarian Party of Tennessee. And I choose Tennessee because I don't, I'm not aware of any nonsense going on there. And you look at, at these two groups, I don't want you to have to make a choice. I want you to be able to hedge your bets. And I know that hedging bets might be bad. Uh, I know that hedging bets might give the Liberal Party more gunpowder than they otherwise might have. But having said that, it, I, I think it makes life easier for just some random affiliate. And But mostly my objection to this is that Decade, a decade or so down the line, when the personality conflicts aren't a big deal anymore, that it'll uh, tie our hands in a way that we will want it, want them to not be tied. And so, I'm pretty strongly opposed to this. But, um, but I understand why, why people aren't, or, or yeah, why people do like this. And uh, that's my opinion. Okay, I'm going to take the privilege of going next on Dr. Moulton. Um, I believe the job of our bylaws is to protect the National Libertarian Party, and our duty is to that. Um, to say they have to make a choice, people are already having to make a choice between the Republican Party and the Libertarian Party. We wouldn't allow someone to also, because they're hedging their bets, be an affiliate of the Republican Party as well. Just because this is allegedly some kind of schism that has the current situation arisen from with allegedly within our ra our ranks, um, it isn't only. There's, in fact, quite a bit of Democrat backing. Well, when I say quite a bit, we're talking percentage-wise, like not percentage-wise of the Democratic Party, talking about percentage-wise within our own small numbers. You're either a Libertarian Party affiliate or you're not. The fact is, I would rather have the terms of engagement spelled out in our bylaws because already I can tell you somebody doing that is just cause for disaffiliation right now. And it should be in here already so, we're, so people know and there isn't, again, depending upon which LNC, um, do we have the sword of Damocles over our head or do we not? Plus, another national party is going to have their own conventions and nominate their own candidates. And we're going to end up with this whole, are we going to disaffiliate? Are we not going to disaffiliate if they don't put our candidate and they put their candidate? This just opens up a can of worms that we don't need to open. The path to healing however way you look at it is i'm sorry this is kind of a zero-sum game 
And I don't mean zero sum with people. I mean zero sum with entities. The path to a, any kind of reunification is for one group not to exist anymore and join the other one. The fact is, with our statement of principles, which is basically unamendable, um, we don't have an option really as an LP because you're never going to get seven eighths of registered delegates at a vote to dissolve that. And part of their objections is to the statement of principles to merge into them. So as far as the Libertarian Party is concerned, there's only a one way path, and that's to come back to the LP. So we better be open about that right from the front. If a state party is saying, well, we're going to be affiliates at uh, affiliates of both, they're the ones causing the schism. We need to heal within our own ranks and not have one foot in one camp and one foot in the other. You're in the Libertarian Party, you change it to what you'd like it to be, and if you don't think it's worth it or you like something else better, I do wish you all the luck. But we are here to exist. And in fact, uh, and this is why it's just cause for disaffiliation. I don't have um, the entire bylaws in front of me, but in the purposes statement, the purposes of the National Libertarian Party, um, and by virtue of that, its affiliates is to exist as a political party separate from and independent from all other political parties in this country. Um, so with or without this language in here, uh, that is definitely just cause for disaffiliation. I'd rather have it spelled out. And this same section where we have our other proposal making it clear about endorsements of candidates, you are just setting yourself up for our presidential candidates being uncertain and this being gamed as a way to get our nomination well, this dual affiliate with ballot access, we won't put your candidate on the ballot. We're a member of this other national party. We're going to put their candidate on the ballot. That is just a recipe for absolute disaster. And I also think it starts getting into a recipe for absolute disaster if we um, have state parties doing this for ballot access laws. Where are we going to spend money? in a state that maybe costs $200,000 to get ballot access with a group that won't even commit to us, where the next day they could go, now nah, we want to go over there and we just threw all our member money out the window that way. No, that is not in the best interest of the Libertarian Party and that is not the path to healing. Dr. Moulton. Uh, uh, well, first of all, I agree with everything the secretary just, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, the chair just said. Um, the... With regard to what Mr. Rolette said about uh, healing and coming together, uh, this bylaw deals with affiliates. It doesn't deal with individual members. Like an individual can participate in both parties if they want to, but an affiliate can't participate in both parties. Affiliates got to pick a side. Um, and I think that's the right way to go. Um, if we do somehow merge, all the members can go to one entity, which hopefully will be in this direction. So, so yeah, I, I don't really uh, see this as a problem the way uh, Mr. Roulette does. Uh, I, I had another thought with regard to presidential candidates. Again, I don't think this is a problem. I think this is more presidential campaigns rather than um, affiliates themselves. But we have had situations in the past where we had a state where we did not have ballot access. And uh, the presidential campaign and the Libertarian Party sought to get ballot access through another political party. So, for example, when we didn't have ballot access in Oklahoma, the Gary Johnson campaign and the National Party looked into getting it through, I forget if it was no labels or what it was called at the time, who did have ballot access in Oklahoma. Um, and I don't think that would be a matter of the state party affiliating with another national party. I think it's more the presidential campaign going with hat in hand. But again, I'm just trying to look for ways to poke holes on that. So I would in this proposal, so I would bring up that issue. 
Um, yeah, that's it. And um, I couldn't find the hand raise, but thank you, Dr. Moulton. You, you brought up something that like I in intuited needed to be said, but it, it didn't come to my mind is, yeah, we are not talking about individuals. We're talking about our affiliates. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing in our bylaws that say you can't be members of, of multiple parties. You, you, you can't be a candidate in that way. There, there's certain restrictions upon candidates. But um, for instance, I can tell you when I was running my town council campaign, and I was calling lifetime members of the Libertarian Party, I, like half of them, and it was pretty evenly split, were um, registered Democrats or registered Republicans. Meanwhile, they were lifetime members of the Libertarian Party. And then we got guys like Frank Atwood, who's as libertarian as they come, but he started the approval voting party. And that's why he can't be like a delegate at our convention and stuff like that. So individuals can handle this any way they want. But where we're investing our member resources in our affiliates and in building them up, no, they have to be our affiliate. We're not putting our money towards somebody that that that's half of another political party that that just makes no sense um so i think this makes explicit something that already um does exist uh so anyway i i don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on this because it seems like mostly me and dr moulton have dominated the conversation i don't want it to be that way um does anyone else have anything else to say on here Actually, Tom, I see in chat, I was actually making fun of West Virginia, to be honest with you, because I love West Virginia. So I like making West Virginia jokes. If you've never been to West Virginia, oh, my God, I think it's one of the most beautiful states in this country. I wanted to move to West Virginia so badly. Um, Mr. Martin. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I welcome the this the introduction of this proposal. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So I, I will stick that um, on the agenda for voting next time, um, but I will put on the list, I'll draw everyone's attention to it that wasn't here so that they can take a look at it and um, come up with their, with their thoughts. I would say by default right now, it, it will be the last proposal. When we go to finalize our report, if we decide if it passes, let's say it passes, um, we want to put it up more. We'll worry about that at the end. Right now, latecomers go at the end. And when we go to finalize our report, if we want to do a little shifting of priorities, we can do that. But I don't want to mess with all that right now. Um, Mr. Rolette and Dr. Moulton. Yeah. Um, it sort of about this proposal but not really uh, actually not not even about this proposal um i would like it just generally if people would be uh receptive in general to welcoming people back after tempers have cooled like uh, give it given two or three years after after people have settled down and i hope they will to be more or less okay with saying, you know, water under the bridge. But that's that. Dr. Moulton? Uh, well, first of all, I emphatically agree with Mr. Rolette, um, but that's not really a bylaws issue. That's kind of just a human behavior type of issue. Um, the I, I wouldn't... To, clarify with the chair would it be in order when this is brought up uh i guess next week or uh, i mean two weeks from now to vote to pass this proposal but put it yellow in other words could that be proposed or does it take a two-step process that we would I think need to it pass would take it and then we would i think it would take a two-step process okay um yeah, if it, but takes, it would certainly be that that second step would certainly be in order at next meeting too. Okay. Uh, well, just for the record, uh, although I favor this proposal, if it's 
a stu two step process. Uh, I can't support adding more proposals, so I'm gonna vote against this. Uh, if I could vote in one step to pass this and make it yellow, uh, I would be in favor of that. Um, but I think we have the right amount of proposals right now. Um, and I, I think passing this proposal and have it leapfrog over yellow proposals uh, necessarily makes us think about, is it better than or more important than all the proposals we have in yellow right now? And I don't think that's necessarily true. So uh, I would encourage the rest of the committee before voting on this proposal uh, to look at the list of proposals in yellow and see if you all really think this is better or more important than all the proposals in yellow. And I uh, would also say, Dr. Moulton, what I've just said, it's kind of like uncharted territory. Um, if the committee disagrees um, and thinks it could all be done in one step, uh, a majority of the committee can overrule me. Um, you asked, like, my opinion, that's mine. But, you know, ultimately, uh, the committee will will decide that. I wanted to address Mr. Rolette's comment for a moment. Um, this, though, I don't think quite so seriously, but kind of has happened before. Though I will say th there was the Boston Tea Party, which Dr. Moulton will remember, you might remember as well. Um, but I don't know whether Daryl Perry is retconning history because I wasn't around at that time. But from what I was told from him is that when they split off, it was always with the intention of reunification. Um, so I do think we have a history of welcoming people back. I think this situation is a bit different because when you look at, there was a document that was, I don't, I won't call it leaked. It was all over Twitter. Um, but I don't know whether the first instance of it being on Twitter was intentional. So that's why I put like leak in question mark. But when they're talking about things that should be on the table for reevaluation, um, and it's things that, I know some people on this committee individually may have various feelings about, but I think as a group, we can agree that this would just basically not be the Libertarian Party anymore is, well, you know, maybe force is okay in some circumstances like first strike wars and, you know, maybe anarchists shouldn't be allowed in the party. Like these are literal talking points. We are talking about not just disagreeing that we had a real shitty presidential candidate in 2008 and we are mad because a bunch of platform planks got deleted which is what the boston tea party thing was all about this is about fundamentally people i think who just disagree and i'm not saying this in a judgmental sense with the libertarian party there's plenty of people who disagree with the Libertarian Party. I happen to think the country needs a party that is much more closely adherent to, to classical liberalism. Libertarianism is far more radical than classical liberalism is. So I actually don't wish the folks who have these opinions ill. And if they, as far as I'm concerned, are um, always welcome to any kind of reconciliation, but I'm also a realist that if something's not a good fit, it's not a good fit and you wish them well. Sometimes separation is what's best and sometimes separation's not what's best. But no matter what road people take, I hope everyone keeps the rancor and the name calling down, no matter what decision people make, one way or the, or the other. It's like I say, even with the RFK Jr. Um, campaign, some people are really upset. He's got invited to conventions. I'm not going to get into that whole thing. Um, what I am going to get into is something Angela said that I agree with that I don't think sometimes we're very good at as libertarians is she said, and I agree, 
it's in our best interest to have a friendly relationship with him. It's in our best interest to have a friendly relationship with the People's Party. It's in our best interest to have a friendly relationship with the Green Party. Even though we don't agree with them on so many issues, as underdogs, all of us, against the duopoly, we have some common core issues to fight against with, with ballot access and you know more representative voting systems and things like that that um there was something i posted on twitter the other day it comes from the bible i'm not trying to be all religious it's a proverb proverbs are just wisdom it says you know a man who would have friends must himself be friendly and i i, I think being a bit more friendly just in general not even in our own schisms just in general is something that we as the libertarian party need to work work on in general um ms arrowwood since she hasn't spoken then dr moulton i don't know and i was wondering but is this spin-off a real threat or is it just a thorn in our side we may be taking too much action or giving too much credence to it if i just can address that before dr moulton i don't know and I, I'm trying to not use words like threat and things like that. Okay. Um, this language, I think, should have been in here for a while. Because, I, again, I think this is making explicit something that was already implicit in our purpose statement. Um, and I think spelling out things, I'm going to use a, a term that I'm being very hyperbolic just because I was listening to things about the impeachment proceedings earlier today the things that are the high crimes and misdemeanors i think should be pretty explicit in our bylaws things that are going to set you up for disaffiliation i think need to be explicit in our bylaws and this is definitely something that will put a target on you and whether or not it's an actual threat using that word in quote we're too small to even have one affiliate playing this game with the rest of us yeah. You know, we, we all need to be oxen pulling in one direction, even though we might be nipping at each other. We're still, we, we need to be working towards one goal and not be playing these internal political games to this level. There's always going to be some games that's politics, but not to, to, this, to this level. Our bylaws, for good or for bad, um, you know, a lot of people like what happened in reno a lot of people don't like what happened in reno but i think what everyone realized though no matter what side and there is there's more than just two sides to this issue of the 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 multi-sided dnd &D dice that you're on on this issue i think it was a big wake-up call to everybody that our bylaws are not tight enough because obviously i think it was just other libertarians that have stronger opinions in one direction that managed to gain control of the LP. The next time this happens, it might not be libertarians. And I know some people are going to go, oh my God, the Mises Caucus people aren't libertarians. I hate all that kind of crap. But we are very vulnerable in a lot of ways to actual, where everybody would agree, aren't libertarians. Our bylaws need to become much more self-protective and tightened up. <clears throat> Like the fact we don't have notice requirements, as I've said before, is so insane. County parties even realize that's insane. And our national party doesn't have that. We are so set up for an ambush by an actual hostile takeover. It's not even funny. Um, did you have something further, Ms. Arrowwood? You had your hand still raised. Oh, no. Dr. Moulton. Uh, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said, but I, I would push back a, a bit on your point that you didn't think that these uh, parties are reconcilable. Um, I, I do think that the, uh, eventually this other party will collapse and many of the members will return to the Libertarian Party. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of people have all sorts of different opinions. And if you think of it from the perspective of a candidate rather than a party activist, um, like the the only way to 
vote for someone who agrees with you on every single issue is to run as a candidate yourself because it's really rare to find someone who agrees with you on absolutely everything. Um, so the people who left the party um, decided not to immediately recreate another party that's a mirror image of the Libertarian Party. They made some changes, and those changes matched some differences in the preferences of that particular majority constituency in that new party, which seems to lean more moderate than the Libertarian Party does. Um, but that does not mean that those people can't later return to the Libertarian Party or wouldn't be satisfied with the Libertarian Party, um, given that we have a long history, we have more resources, um, we have uh, a, a lot of members, uh, you know, et, et cetera. Uh, it, it makes sense to work within our framework, um, even if the platform may be less agreeable than one that they write themselves. So I, I think there's definitely room for reconciliation in the future. And like Mr. Rollett said earlier, I, I hope that we see that in the next, he said that in the next 10 years, I hope it's much sooner than that, but we'll see. Maybe I said something sloppy, um, Dr. Moulton, because I certainly wish for the same thing. But something I said got interpreted another way. Um, chalk it up to me being still not quite, I'm still quite foggy mentally um, from my from my sickness. There was like somebody on Twitter who, who had talked about some famous author who was like, had some really terrible sickness and then like mark that as the day they think they officially started getting old. Like I feel much older all of a sudden. Now, hopefully I'll feel better like in a month, but I was a lot sicker than I realized um, and kept still trying to do things. So if I said something that you thought was contrary to what you just said, please just chalk that up to um, sloppy wording on my part. Um, I, I think what I said and is, uh, and this is true, no matter what party you're talking about, it's kind of like religion. Um, there are some people, we don't have very many second generation libertarians, but there've been people who've been around for a very long time. And then you kind of get used to, well, this is what I've always been. And sometimes you're just not anymore. It's like somebody who was raised Christian and then, you know, when they're 40 years old, they all of a sudden like realize, you know, I've probably been an atheist for 10 years, but I've been so used to just being a Christian because I've been a Christian for so long that this is just where I'm at. That might not be like the best example, but there, there are people who come and go. There are people who change their mind. I mean, I'd love to say to everyone right now, no, I'm going to be a libertarian to the day I die. But, you know, if 10 years from now I start thinking differently, the best decision for me might be to go be a Democrat or Republican. Like, I can't envision that at all happening now. But I also could tell you 10 years ago, I couldn't envision ever calling myself an anarchist either. So, you know, weirder things in, 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 in life do happen. I think that's all I was just saying is that um, sometimes people do legitimately change their mind. They don't believe the same things they used to. And I just hope we wish them well rather than rancor. That, that, that's all I was trying to say there. I'm not saying people who leave an experiment for a little while want to try something else should not be welcomed back if they realize that this is actually where they belong. Anyone who feels that this is where they belong, this is where they belong. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so I think we've, we've got our now an additional marching order, which would be for me to give some notice on the list that for the people who weren't here, that this is going to be on the agenda for next time. Um, I would suggest... Dr. Moulton, now that you know, like my opinion, that it would have to be two steps um, that you. I, I would allow like before we even consider the proposal for for maybe you to make a motion 
trying to think of how it would be prior to us even hearing the proposal uh, that the committee agree. I don't know. I, I we'll work it out some way where you'll be able to have the committee to decide and not have this be a decision on high from me. I mean, you could you could always make a motion, I suppose, before we consider this one that any that, new that, that's fine proposals, we'll, we'll work it out yeah in two weeks yeah but he, here, here's my thought because i might not be the only one maybe you want to make a motion next week that any new proposals that are brought forth are, are automatically yellow i mean that would be a way to handle it because then you're not dealing with this. no moved yeah that that could be something that um that way it, because to me, making it just specific to this one is what felt kind of weird and made me think it needed to be two steps. But I think you could do a blanket motion that would be in order. Now, I'm not in favor of that, but I'm just trying to facilitate you getting a decision of the committee um, made. Okay. All righty. Um, I got to get packing and stuff for Virginia. and Virginia. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Virginia is this weekend, too. I'm not their parliamentarian, though. That's a... Uh, Mr. Seebeck, which is probably why he's not here. He might actually be traveling um, or reading bylaws. Uh, so, um, all right, that will be it for this evening. We're adjourning at 832 Mountain, 1032 um, Eastern. And I'll see you guys in two weeks. And good luck, uh, Rationales Committee. Hey, have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.